Okay, good evening ladies and gentlemen, this is Clueless 8 again and on this particular 10 minute segment we're going to cover the NASDAQ Composite, the Russell 2000 Index, the Biotech uh, ETF, the IBB, um, the SPY, the IWM, the QQQ, and let's see if we can fit all that in. So let's start off with uh, the business at hand. So here we have a, uh, a nice uptrend uh, line on the NASDAQ Composite. As we can clearly see, the uptrend is very much intact. Uh, we did have a um, we did have a bit of a scare here on uh, Friday. However, if you see the reversal, this clearly negates this particular drop. If we had fallen b uh, below the 45.40 level, um, and again, uh, uh, then we would have uh, been looking at some downside. You know, we're looking at, at 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 some lower levels here on the Nasdaq, but that didn't happen. So let's respect the charts as we see it. So what do we, what kind of pattern symmetry do I see here? Uh, I've shown this before. I'll show it again. Uh, we got pretty oversold uh, at these levels, as you can see. Um, my previous video casts have also drawn this very, uh, very uh, in a very transparent manner, so anyone can understand it. So here we have a uh, large over 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 uh, sold condition. We got oversold again here. Um, and uh, this is what happened okay so this could be looked on as a inverse head and shoulder this being the head this being the left shoulder this is the right shoulder the neckline would be at this level here and above the neckline we're looking at new highs so if you look at this pattern symmetry as we see here clearly you can see that there's no real big signs of a massive breakdown Keep in mind that breakdowns can happen instantaneously in this market. We could have a event uh, downturn, waterfall decline, spinning top, naked bar, whatever you want, might want to call it. And I've shown you all that uh, quite often. And intraday, we do have sell-offs. We had a quick sell-off intraday, and we made money on that on the IWM puts. So um, saying all that, these reversals have to be respected. The reversals are telling us that this particular pattern, you can see that clearly, it looks like it wants to break out. If we fail here and make a massive movement down below 4560 on the NASDAQ composite, we're going to be in trouble. But till then, we're okay. We're not completely overbought yet on the stochastics. So there we go. Let's take a look at the QQQ. And there we go on the QQQ. One hour chart again. This is the daily chart, but I'm looking at more short-term stuff here going on. Keep things close to the vest. So here we have the QQQ, same story. Let me draw this out. Don't make this too complicated, okay? You got a left shoulder, you got a head here, a right shoulder. This came off here, this will go here. Once it breaks over the neckline, which is this, we have a fair shot to make a new high. That's the QQQ. So far, there's, uh, and, and again, it's pretty simple to understand. If we broke below the lower Bo Bollinger and this, and this uptrend line from, uh, from uh, a couple of weeks ago, let me see, when was that? From, uh, well, exactly a month, a month ago, um, which is September, uh, August 8th. And if we break this, then obviously the whole you know the whole pattern changes then it becomes a head and shoulder now these things can happen quite instantaneously I will show you today how it happened with the IWM in a matter of hours one minute it looked like a mini head and shoulder the next minute it once you know once it turned it looked uh, very much and it play out very well um, as a inverse head and shoulder so on this one we could uh, I'm trying to see where I could pinpoint a head I mean there are multiple heads here one two C and there could be another one that forms up here and of course if we can break out of those then we are obviously gonna fall pretty as simple as that below this level below 99 we got some much lower levels which can be easily drawn with the fib retracements which I've shown before I believe and uh, that's it but so far right now this doesn't look like one topping head alright so we're good to go let's take a look at the IWM for IWM traders you know these things this, this chart is very important um, so what do I see here on the daily let me start off with the daily on the daily you can see here that this pattern this was a cup and
and this was the hand this is a handle and if this handle breaks down below let's say 114.25 then we're gonna come down and visit 112 it's a lot of money if you're on the short side however if this handle works out like it did here let me show you something very clearly look what happened we came down here 115 I called that made money on those puts on that one intraday it had a reverse handle reverse uh, uh, um, reversal candle okay and this is where we are so at this point it's very likely that we get back and test the 11815 or the upper end of the Bollinger on the on the IWM and I think that happens by this week or or earlier maybe it happens by this Friday if not earlier so this pattern I believe gets completed also happens to coincide with the upper Bollinger so 116.56 all the way to 118 it's also very decent sum of money I post the parameters during the day on lifetime Twitter feed follow them see the numbers print on your uh, PNL okay now caution anything can change so let me show you the other side of the picture uh, you could you could draw this as a head you could draw this as a right shoulder I'm sorry left shoulder right shoulder and down we go and if we do come down and we pierce through the 50 uh, moving average we're gonna come down to 114.25 again so important to keep that in mind alright RVX is extremely important in, in playing the IWM and the RUT calls or puts so do monitor that during the day I have posted some very significant and critical charts on the RVX which is the Russell 2000 fear index please get to know it make it your friend because that'll make you a lot of money it's not always that easy to read in a choppy market but uh, hey you know nothing is easy in this business you want to be su you successful in a big way you have to work hard you have to learn you have to take your lumps move on you know risk quantification and live to trade another day okay that's just the way that this this is done and easy trade never makes the real money simple as that it's always the tough ones that uh, produce the largest amount of uh, ROI which is return on investment so um, let me show you the spies while I'm at it spy 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 where is my spy okay here we go trying to pull the spy out here two minutes to go so let me look at the spy on a one hour basis same story as the S&P you know you got lower Bollinger here at 200 upper Bollinger at around 201.6 um, and then if we break that we got some lower levels to go so far the McClellan oscillator is still in over is is in somewhat oversold uh, conditions it did get overbought here uh, let me show you this so you can all can see it so the McClellan oscillator gets overbought here okay around this level around these levels so um, what happens put it up here we have a short-term top okay oscillator up here one second look what happens a little short-term top so oscillator again has to swing back up here by that time we'll be up here and to decide what you need to do if you break out all hell breaks loose for a short while um, but then it drops again that'll be too much of a move out of the standard deviation too much of a standard deviation away from the 50 and the 34 moving averages I've explained that before clearly this is the these are the 34 let me do a close-up this is the the red line is the 50 the the orange line is the 34 right now we are basically neutral territory if you want to look at it that way on the 60 minute charts so if we deviate too much from um, let me show you this if we deviate too much from the from the 50 and the 34 guess what happens reversion to the mean it comes down tested it slips down again this was too much of a pull pull back from the 50 and the 34 so what does it do comes back and kisses it at this point we're going to pull up again the standard deviation is going to be pretty high it will revert back to the mean same old game same old story McClellan is still oversold at 194 so chances are that we uh, actually move higher as we get into the week ask the harvest moon I'm just kidding but seriously read up on it the super moon cycle so um, that's it on the next video cast I will um, cover couple of individual stocks.